Hey, to our online family, welcome to Experience Koi Global. We are so excited that you decided to join us on today. Hey, I pray this message is a blessing to you, that it uplifts you, it brings transformation to you. And hear me when I say this, where you are now is the lowest you will ever be because you're living by faith. Have a listen. We're in the series at the movies and... Uh, the Lord gave me kind of a twist to do it because usually when we did it back in the day, we would analyze different movies and kind of build a bridge between the gospel and the movies, the blockbusters that we see. And there were a couple of movies that we were going to kind of share about. And um, one of them was Inside Out 2. Anybody seen that? In Why is my mic going in and out? Lord, in the name of Jesus, not to today is not the day. I was going to talk, Sydney. I was going to talk about this movie, Inside Out 2. Anybody see Inside Out 2? I'm not going to talk about it, though, because none none of, not enough of you have seen it. But, but I was going to talk about Inside Out 2 because sometimes we've got to deal with our emotions, and that's a really good movie. Did anybody, ever, anybody ever been anxious and just anxiety has just moved you, right? We're not going to talk about that today, but, but we might get to a little bit of that at the end of the, end of the, the series. But... Uh, there's a couple of other movies I want to discuss today that I believe will be a blessing to us um, in this message. So the title of my message today is, is this, Trading Places. Trading Places. You'll understand the, 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 the title in just a bit, Trading Places. If you want a subtitle, my subtitle would be, I, I Trust in God, Not Man. I Trust in God, not man. Are you getting it so far? Trading places because uh, for some reason we've got man and we've got our job and we've got things and we've got issues that are in the place of where God should be. Come on. And so, and so we got to trade some places and we got to say, I trust in God, not in man. My trust is in God, not in Man, now I, last week I gave you the top five blockbusters of all times, of all time, right? Today I want to give you my top five movies, okay? You can't argue with this because they're my top five movies. These are my favorite movies. This is Pastor Mike's favorite movies. And so you better pass your judgment off to somebody else, okay? These are my favorite movies. Number five, number five. Mr. Holland's Opus. Don't even worry about it, man. It's an amazing movie. My man Cole, I cry every time I watch that movie. It's absolutely amazing. Mr. Holland's Opus. My next favorite movie, number four, is Thomas Crown Affair. Woo! I don't know how. See, I told you to pass your judgment off to somebody else. These are my top five. They ain't got to be your top five. Okay? These are my top five. Thomas Crown Affair, amazing movie. I mean, classic, just classic. It's a thief movie. It's, it, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Thomas Crown Affair. The next one, number three, Gone in 60 Seconds. Let's see. Gone in 60, because that Shelby is, is, oh, my gosh. I've driven one before. Oh, OMG. It will change your life. That movie is so gone in 60 seconds. I think a lot of us can, can agree. Sometimes we can get that paycheck and it be gone in, oh my gosh, I'm preaching to somebody today. I'm preaching to somebody today. I'm preaching to somebody today. You know, we could be in that relationship and then it be, <laughs> I'm telling you, gone in 60 seconds. Number two, number two, my second favorite movie of all times, Rudy. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is, man, that, that's a, man, y'all might have to come over to my house and watch that. I cry at the same parts every single time because that movie is so, it's, it's, I just, I love it. It's the story of an underdog, Rudy. If you haven't seen it, don't go see it because you might judge me. Like, that movie was whack. It was boring. But it was, a, it was an amazing movie, Rudy. Here's my number one favorite movie of all time. Can you guess? Can you guess? Boys in the Hood. <laughs> Just because I'm from LA doesn't mean that's my favorite movie. Okay, there's racist, there's sexist. That's locationist. 
My favorite movie of all time is Trading Places. Oh, now you understand the title of the, of the message. Trading Places. Trading Places starred uh, 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 Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. Amazing movie, talking about Wall Street. It's a man that started with nothing, and they made a bet that they could take somebody from nothing and make him something, and they could take somebody who was something and make him nothing. They could trade places. And it was an amazing thing in the movie that, that, that at a certain point they were both trusting in man and realized that man will fail you every single time. You've got to put your trust in God and God alone. That's my favorite movie of all time. I can watch that movie over and over and over again. Classic movie, great movie. Don't judge me. Here's what I wanted to say about that movie. That movie, Trading Places, get this, made $90 million worldwide. Now, now on last week, we saw movies that were making $2 billion worldwide. And this week, I'm looking at my, most, my favorite movie of all time, only made $90 million. You wouldn't consider that a blockbuster. You'd be like, Pastor, that's not a blockbuster. Because you gave us the blockbusters last week. They're talking about $2 billion. You're talking about $90 million? That's a far way away. But if you were to take a second and analyze when that movie came out, 1983, holla. It's the year I was born. Great year. Phenomenal year. If you were born after that year, ugh. <laughs> if you were born in 1983, And if you were like on that little bubble at 1982 or 84, like, but you were on the bubble, we might just kind of let you in, right? But 83 is where it's at. But get this, if you keep it in proper context, get this, Trading Places was the fourth largest grossing movie in 1983. I submit to you that you've been looking at your life in the wrong context. You've been analyzing everyone else's life and not analyzing your life based off of the context of where God's taking you. I, I can sit here, I can stand here and say, man, this is a small church because when I look at elevation, when I look at transformation, when I look at all these other, I'm a small church, but that's out of context because I'm not in the United States of America. I'm not in a massive major city that's worldwide known that people are flying. Come on. So I have to look at it in proper context. When I look at it in the context of, of the Namibian context, man, this is one of the largest churches in the country. I mean to tell you, man, this is one of the nicest church buildings in the country. You don't have to say amen to that. I already know it. I already know it. I mean, we got freshly painted walls. Come on, somebody. <laughs> We got, we got lights, we got smoke, we got haze, we got microphones, we got, but we got the word, and lives are being transformed, people are getting saved, people are getting set free, people are getting healed, people are getting delivered. This is one of the best churches in this nation. It's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this congregation. Are you with me? But see, I have to look at it in the proper context, and when I look at it in the proper context, we're doing big things. So if you can begin to look at your life in the proper context and trade places, uh, get this, with what you think and where you think you should be and get in alignment and get into an agreement where, where God wants you to be, you'll look at yourself and say, I'm doing big things. I'm doing big things. Because where I am now is the lowest I will ever Get this. Every blockbuster starts with a story. And I gave you two, two points last week that in order for you to begin to have a blockbuster type of life, number one, you need a powerful script. You need a power, without a script, you have no movie. You need a powerful script, and that script is the word of God. You've got to live the word of God. You've got to live the word of 
Okay, so now we understood that last week. If you weren't here last week, you can go to our YouTube. You can watch it all over again. Secondly, you got to build a strong cast. Every great blockbuster has a strong cast. They might not be the most popular, but they're strong in acting in the area in the cast that they've been casted for, the, 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 the place that they've been casted for. Are you with me? So you got to build a strong cast, meaning you got to build some community. You got to begin to be discipled. Everybody say disciple. See, you got to build a strong cast. Why? Because whoever surrounds you can determine where you're going. Are you with me? This past Friday, we were here in Opera. She launched her, her book here at the Echo Center. Holla. Rented out the Echo Center and launched her book. Hear me when I say this. She, she rented out the Echo Center to launch the book, and she had, she had like maybe 5,000 people in here. Okay, it wasn't 5,000, but it felt like it, though. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, you ever, you ever seen a, a whole bunch of people, and they just carried that, like, they came up in here like, I didn't know who the pastor was. The way they walked up in here, there was a guy in the front row. I was like, hi, sir. Welcome. Uh, is this your church? Like, you look so clean. But what I saw was, was community. That when we're launching something, if we want to launch far, we need community. If we want to grow, if we want to develop, we need community. And when we're talking about community, we're talking about we can't isolate ourselves. We have to stay in community. God never called you to be isolated. If he called you to be isolated, then he would have just created Adam and just left it at that. But he said it's not good for man to be alone. So that means that we need people. Everybody say, we need people. Okay, turn to your neighbor and say, I need you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I need you too. Turn to the other one that's not talking to you and say, I told you I need you. You better start. You got to surround yourself with godly people. You got to surround yourself with the ones that will take you to the word and not take you to more problems. You got to surround yourself to some, with someone that learns, knows how to pray. Come on, you need some praying friends around you. You need some intercessors around you. So people who will stand in the gap so that when you're weak, they're standing in the gap praying and interceding for you to get on up. Come on. You need people around you. People that won't quit on you. People that won't give up on you just because you missed it. We need community. Not fake community. Instagram provides fake community. Twitter provides fake community. Facebook provides fake community because people can like from the, the, the seat of their homes, but they have no connection with you. How many times you know somebody that's following you and they walk right past you? How is that community? If we're in community and if we're discipling, that means I have your phone number and you have my phone number and I know what's going on in your life and you know what's going on in my life and I can speak in your life and you can speak into my life and you can challenge me and I can challenge you and I can correct you and you can correct me and even if we get upset, we're going to hug it out and we're going to do it all over again. Not this false sense, this fake community that the moment I challenge you, oh, how dare you? Well, how dare you have that attitude? That's the reason why you keep getting beat up in life, because you can't be corrected. You can't be challenged. Are we, crea are we creating these people with these soft behinds? Man, I, I thank God that I was born in 1983 because we had to learn how to hold ourselves together because you could be walking down the street and at any moment somebody could haul off on you. Hey, cuz, what set you from? I don't bang. I don't care. We need to jump you. Like, 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 like that was my reality back in the day. You know what I mean, like that was a, there were certain colors that I couldn't wear. There were certain neighborhoods I knew not to go in. Are you with me? There were certain words I knew not to say. Matter of fact, there was a certain way I knew how to address my elders. And at some point, we've lost that because we're woke now. I'll never forget this one kid at Trevor Thick. He was like, hey, what's up, Mike? I almost hit him. I almost hit him. Not because it was disrespectful. It was more like, how dare you do you? And I almost grabbed him by the ear and took him to his daddy. Like, what are you, who, who, how are you training this one? 
Could you imagine? Okay, you younger, younger folk, y'all woke, but the ones in my age that got a little gray hair, could you imagine you go up to the auntie and call them by their first name? Now, I have, a, I have two aunties in my life that I can call by their first name, but even then, it feels weird. So when we're talking about community, I didn't want to get to stay on this so long, but good gracious, y'all pulling this out of me. When we're talking about community, anybody over the age of 60 or 50 here, anybody over the age that's willing to say that over the age of 50? Isabella, what? Anybody over the age, come on, over 50, over 50, come on, this, I'm not going to talk about you. This is a place to honor. Over 50, okay, anybody over 45? Let's just, I'm on a few more people. 45, keep your hand in there, hand in there, hand in there. These are your elders. You need to show them some respect. You got to show them some respect. You got to pick their brains because they've been through some things. Come on, they've experienced some life. And when I talk to my son, he'd be like, what you mean? What you? I'm like, man, I've been through some things, sir. I know this. And in the same breath, elders, we've got to be patient with the young ones as well. Patience. Patience means I'm not going to cut you off, but I will smack you upside your head. Because <laughs> we're talking about community. You can't grow without some challenges. And if you give up in the midst of some challenge, you'll never grow beyond that. Why? Because the next time that same challenge comes, you'll go back over the same cycle and you'll quit again. Some reasons, some of the times, or sometimes we go through the same test over and over again because we haven't passed it the first time. So we've got to build community. Okay, okay, let me get into the let me get into my 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 my, my, my message for for today because y'all 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 using up all my time. Y'all behave. On last week, I, I had this prophetic word, and I gave it a part of it last week, and the Lord was telling me to release it today. And so let me just go ahead and, and, and release it. You, you've been hidden because of the assignment on your life, but you're being released for your assignment is now. God sees you in this year of exponential expansion. God is releasing more kingdom-minded millionaires, more kingdom-minded influencers. I, 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 the word that keeps coming up is accelerate. Accelerated finances. Accelerated in positions and opportunities. Accelerated in deals and acceleration in yeses and amens. Which leads me to my point today, my third point. So the first one is you got to live by the word. The second one is you got to build community. The third one is you got to secure the right finances. No movie get, goes on to the screen without some finances. You got to secure the right resources, the, the right finances to get, to get your movie going, to get your life going. You got to get this, you got to rely on God's provision. Trading places. I trust in God, not me. I trust in God, not Man, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you start relying on God's unlimited provision, he'll start providing for you in ways you never thought were possible. If you will start relying on, on God's provision, he'll, he'll start to provide for you in ways you never thought were possible because you're putting your trust in him, not, not in man. And one of the greatest ways, and you can drop your rocks, we've already collected offerings, so just get over it. One of the greatest ways is you can show your trust is in your finances. Because how often do you do your budget and you look at your budget and you're like, wait, I got to give 10% and, and plus that, plus an offering, and, and I've got to pay these people? It doesn't make sense, but are we going to live by faith or are we going to live by what we see? Right? And we'll get in that in just a little bit. But, but here's the challenge when we're talking about finances is you trust in your job, but you don't trust in the man who gave you the job. Because what's so amazing is, is God says, okay, give me back 10% plus uh, offering, right? Uh, 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 give some sacrificial 
offerings. Do you trust me? Provision is, is necessary for us to take the gospel around the world. Philippians chapter 4 in verse 19 in the New Living Translation says, and this same, listen y'all, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs. Paul is talking to the church of Philippi and he says, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs. Now, has anybody ever used that scripture before? Come on, anybody ever used that scripture before? All my needs are met, right? My God, my God shall supply all of my needs. Anybody? Come on, anybody? Anybody? Anybody over here, the silent crew? Anybody over here? Anybody here? It says, and this, this same God who takes care of me. I'm here to tell you that God takes care of his people. I, I don't know how he does it, but there's times when I look at the bank account and it doesn't make sense, but yet we still have food. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how it happens, but there is not, and don't you look at my stomach, <laughs> there is not a meal that is missed. Are you with me? And we get to eat exactly how we want, you know what I mean? And when I say how we want, maybe we get to put extra mayonnaise on the sandwich. And this same God who takes care of me, I don't know how many times my gas has been below E. And I'm like, Lord, I trust in you. And I don't know how I got from point A to B on that tank. I'm not telling you to do this, okay? I'm not telling, I'm just, I'm just, okay. But yeah, I make it, and then I still make it to the gas station to put, because, you know, you know how you try to stretch that thing as far as you can stretch it, so then you don't have to, you know, stretch it again, because you stretch all the things you needed to do, and then you fill it up at the end, so the next time you got, now you got even more, oh, am I the only one? Come on, y'all, don't play me. Don't play me. Don't play me in this house. Come on. Even if you got money now, you know what it was like. Come on. But I have to put my trust. It says, in this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs. You know why Paul was saying that? Get this. This is why Paul was saying that. He was saying that because the church of Philippi was partnering with him in the ministry. They were sowing into him, and that was his response to what they were doing. So you... You can't, put, this, put scripture back up there for me. You can't, you can't claim that unless you're partnering with the man of God. It, it won't work because the only reason why he's saying, and my God shall supply all your needs, is because of what they were supplying for him. Man, you can look at me however you want to. It is okay. Because I still trust in God. No, seriously, I still trust in God. Cynthia, how long has it been since I've gotten a full paycheck? Since Feb? So put your rocks down. And you can't connect to that until you get connected with sowing into what the man of God is casting vision for. So now because of that, he says, and this same God who takes care of me. I haven't had a full, full paycheck since February, but God's still taking care of me. Oh, I have full paycheck, but I made it somehow to the United States of America because I put my trust in God, not man. It's so freeing to be able to preach like that because nobody's holding me. You know, ain't nobody, you can't say nothing. It says, and he says, the supply on these uh, from his glories, riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Okay, here's that next part. So it's been given to us in Christ Jesus. So if I want access to the riches that God has, they're in Christ Jesus, not out of Christ. What does that mean? Outside of Christ Jesus, they can fall apart. They can dry up. In Christ Jesus, it keeps, it keeps growing, it keeps developing. Now, if you go on to Luke 6.38, Luke 6.38, it says, give and it will be given. To who? You. How? Good measure, 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. Now get this, get this. The scripture says give and it will be given. Okay, so giving to you is already done. The giving to you is already done. All you have to do is give. The moment you give, you're already connected to the already done. It's already given to you. Are you with me? It says give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Has anybody ever gave like a 10 coin offering before? I have. You know, 10 cent offering. Anybody getting a 10 cent offering before? 10 cent offering. I've done it. I've done it before. Here's the key. Let me just put some seed out there. Oh, come on, y'all. Let me just put some seed out there. I don't have to worry about the size wherever I am, wherever. Let me just do something. And that's sometimes the problem, that we don't launch that business because we want it to be full grown before we launch it. And God's like, just, just launch. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't live by faith because we want to see the whole thing coming together before we start living. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. You never stop living, which means you got to constantly be in a position of faith. Are you with me? So you got to give, and it will be given to you. You got to see, it, it, that shows who do you trust. I've had to look at my own finances like, man, okay, do I give? Do I hold on to this? Okay, okay, ugh. And then when there's times when I've just held on to it and it still didn't complete what I needed to get done. And then I see my wife's face of saying, just give it. And I was like, no, we got to be able to eat. And then we still, you know I mean, we still didn't do everything that we wanted to do. Sometimes we just got to release that thing and sow it. Deuteronomy 28.8, get this, Deuteronomy 28.8, you're, you're trusting, you're relying on God as your source. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. Okay, wait a minute. The Lord will command, will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. So the only way for my storehouses to be blessed and for that blessing, David, to be commanded on the storehouses is I need storehouses. I mean, it's just plain as day. I need storehouses. What's the storehouse? I need savings accounts. You know, F&B, Ned Bank, Standard Bank, you know what I mean? Uh, Citibank, Capital One. I'm taking you to some U.S. banks. Come on. Uh, ABSA, you know what I mean? Um, uh, 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 what's some U.K. banks? Come on, somebody throw some U.K. Huh? Oh, Barclays, 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 Barclays. Right, right, we need to, uh, come on, y'all. It didn't say he's going to command a blessing on your storehouse. It says he's going to be commanding a blessing on your storehouses, plural. So that looks like, that looks like us opening up some savings accounts and putting some money in there. And Lord, bless this. And you're not relying on God. I'm sorry, you're not relying on the bank's interest rate. You're relying on God to increase it. He says, the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. Wait a minute. God can't bless what you haven't set your hand to. Oh, come on, y'all. God, do this in my life. God, do that. God, bring me more clients. But you haven't offered the service yet. He says, he says, he'll bless, he'll bless you, he'll, he'll bless all that you set your hand to. Father, I've set my hand to this. Bless it. Increase it. Cause more clients to come to it. Why? I'm putting my trust in God. But he says, he says, I'll bless what you put your hand to, not his hand to, your hand to. See, some of us are just waiting for God to do it all. 
like, hey, let's pray for more ladies to come to, to, to conference. No, God says they're already ready. You got to have to go out there and put your hand to them and bring them in. You're going to have to pick up the phone. You're going to have to knock on some doors. Come on, you got to, right? That's how the victory comes. Like I'm looking at my own life. I'm like, okay, Lord, there's a couple of businesses that you placed in our hearts, me and my wife's heart. Okay, let's step out and start doing it. So I start making phone calls. And then this door opens because I made that phone call. But if I hadn't made that phone call, that door wouldn't have opened. But get this, the door was ready to be open, but it was, it was waiting for my phone call. So the moment I called that person, the door that God needed to open for me was all, it opened the moment I dialed, boom, 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 and hit the button and, the, and waited for the, and I said, hello, door open. Now, the door opened. I had a phone call with somebody. They were like, boom, 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 boom. I'm not saying you all the details because you nosy. And then, a, and then a day later, a day later, get this, a day later, they said, oh, I want to connect you with this person because this person knows this, this, and this, and these are your questions, and they can help you. Door open. Now, the door didn't hope open, but get this, it didn't open for me to see instantly. It was already open, but I had to wait. So it might take a couple of hours. It might take a day or two, but the door is open. God is just waiting for the person to connect you to respond to what he's placed on their heart to do. Are you hearing me? So, so you got to put your hand to something. As I started putting my hands to some things, some more doors are starting to open in the realms of, of business. Why? Because you just got to start doing some stuff. You don't have to wait for the perfect conditions all the time. Oh, come on, y'all. Ladies. I like that. Let me do it again. Ladies, do it again. Who did it? Who did the hello? Okay, ladies. Yeah, I like that. Single ladies. Hey, it won't, it won't hurt. You know, it won't hurt. Go down to Adrian Myers. And go ahead and just look at some rings so you know exactly what you want. You know what I mean? So that you can go ahead and drop them hints. You know, there's princess cut, there's emerald cut, there's oval, you know, there's round, there's, there's you know what I mean, there's uh, 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 settings, there's... Come on, y'all, you know what I mean? There's, there's one carat, two carat, there's, you know, real clear, yellow. Okay, whatever. I'm trying to help you, but you don't want it. It's okay. He says, he says and he will bless you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. Okay, here we go. He will bless you in the land that he's giving you. You got to make sure you're in the right land. And sometimes... We leave the land that God's placed us in to go to another land, and that wasn't even the land that God wants us in. And then when stuff doesn't work out, you're trying to make everything work out. Why? Because that's the place where you're not supposed to be, and where you're not supposed to be, you have to struggle to make everything happen. But when you're in the place where God's called you, everything will work out. Now, it's not going to be like, you know, going through the, uh, uh, the tulips of life, like it's going to be all roses. You're still going to have to put in some work, come on. You're still going to have to fight some devils, come on. And I'm not calling you devils. I'm talking about literally the devil, right? You're still going to have to fight some things, right? But, but the fight is fixed because you win. The key is get into the ring. Stop being afraid. Get into the ring and fight the good fight of faith. And the church says, Amen. that's why 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Okay, God wants to make sure that you have all sufficiency in all things so you can get this, get this so you can, you can sow into every good work. So when you hear of a work, you hear of, of something happening, you can sow into that good work because you have all sufficiency. Are you with me? See, we've got to get to the place, church, when we say, hey, we need microphones, somebody stands up, I got them. Notice, 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 notice. Uh, Aunt Celeste, I, no one stood up to say, how much are they? They just said, I got them because you got so much. You don't care what the price is. I see there's a need. We're going to make sure it's met. My dad, Sidney, said something to me uh, years ago. He says, if you have to ask how much it costs, you can't afford it. 
You know, you'll go into some retail stores and the prices won't be there. And you have to ask how much it costs. It, 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 why? Because cause you, you're calculating, does my budget allow me to, you, you know what I mean? Because sometimes there's some things that you'll look at and you'll want and you'll be like, hey, guess what? I don't care how much it costs. I like it, I want it, I buy it. There's been times when I purchase a pair of shoes and people are like, those shoes are so ugly. And my response was, you didn't buy them. <laughs> I like it. it I, I had the money for it. I bought it. We've got to get so resourced, church, that when we say, hey, we're going to buy this whole park. Everybody stands up. Hey, here's, here's a million. I got a million. No, I got two million. I, I, I beat you this time. We've got to be so bold and in such great community that no one suffers lack. you got a business idea, we can fund it. Come on. We're in such strong community, you want to go study, we can cover it. And we're not worried if you're going to sow back into the trust because we know that you're in community and that's what we do. Are you kidding me? Why are we competing against each other when we should be completing each other? Amen. Are you hearing me? Our job, our job is to help each other to grow and support each other. And that's you sowing into that as well. Are you with me? I mean, I can't stand as, as people, I almost said something else. Can't stand as people. We always waiting for somebody to fall. So we can step in. There's enough market share for everybody. Are you hearing me? There's enough market share for everybody. We all just need to be supportive of each other, period. In community, we say, hey, 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 what you working on? Oh, that's what you're working on? Okay, how can I support you in that? Like, for instance, Jose, you got the ice cream. Do you have ice cream? I mean, you got ice cream business. Do you have ice cream business? I'm trying to help you, sir. <laughs> it's hot. Now, we could drive. Man, don't you start playing that music yet, man. I'm flowing in the spirit. <laughs> I'm, man, I'm, I'm trying to help some people today. We could drive to Polar Ice. Or we can say, what do you need to get the ice cream here, sir? Anybody in here eat ice cream? He got some good ice cream. I've had it. It's some good ice cream. There's this one specific ice cream that I absolutely love. It's called it's Apple Crumble. Man, sir, if you get, I will be the, 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 the ambassador. <laughs> you understand me? I will. <laughs> Where's Godfrey? Godfrey, he's out with the kids? Okay, Vinny's there. Vin, he got potatoes, some of the best potatoes I've ever had. And I don't know what the difference is. I just think because they're Godfrey's potatoes and he's born again, they just, they just instantly taste anointed. You understand me? I've, had, I've turned them into some chips, and them were some good chips. I didn't gain weight from them, you know what I mean? I, <laughs> Man, what will it take to make sure everybody in here, when they buy potatoes, they buy them from you? There's market share. We have to start in, being in community and knowing what each other are working on. Yeah. Well, pastor, 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 what if they don't come right? We're in community, which means we hold each other accountable. Yeah. Kip, amazing contractor, the most calmest, relaxed contractor you will ever meet. He's been working on my house for almost, how long y'all been married? 10 years? So I knew you before that because I did the whole, the whole shebang for y'all. So you've been working on my house for about a decade. And there's been time when things malfunctioned from what he did in my house. 
And I called him, and he came and fixed it. Why? Because we're in community. I don't quit just because something didn't work, because it could happen with another contractor. Are you with me? Amazing contractor. Okay, you need, you need a DJ? DJ Master Will, right there. DJ, he will come to your party and tear that place up. You understand me? Here's the other part. You ever need an ambulance? We pray you don't, but if someone you know does. That's kingdom. That's how our lives become a blockbuster because in the, in the, in the industry, the, the movie industry, they all support each other. Huh? Shoot. Okay. Okay. I think I'm flowing with you. Anybody ever have shoes that they don't need? Then you got uh, uh, Sydney and O'Perry's uh, Shoe Foundation, where they bless kids who need shoes to run so they can. <sighs> There's market share. Now they give away shoes to those in need so they can run their track. And we've got the pantry where we're passing out clothes. Does that mean that the pantry's any less and their foundation's any less? No, that means that we need to support each other. Every time they call for shoes, I find the pair of shoes that I could give them. Because I don't be using all my shoes, although I have a lot, and don't judge me. Are you getting something today? At a certain point, if you're in the kingdom, we have to figure out who do we trust? Man or God? We have to trade places. I didn't even get to talk about faith, but I think I talked about faith. Here we go. For we walk by faith, not by That means that if you're walking by faith, you're not caught up in your competition. Because it says, for we walk by faith, not by So if you're making decisions based off of what you, you're not in. Okay. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. He'll bless your storehouses. But if you don't have any storehouses, there's nothing for him to. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you don't have any hope, faith has nothing to do. Hope is your expectation. Come on, hope are, are those goals. Come on, hope, are, uh, hope is that, that desire. Hope is that thing you want to accomplish. You got to have some hope because then that gives your faith something to do because faith is the substance of things hoped for. So don't throw your hope out the window. Keep your hope because as long as you hold on to hope, faith has something to work on. So we want God to move. We want to, we want, come on, you, we want to have blockbusters in life, but we have no expectation of God doing anything. Therefore, our faith, which has all power, it comes from God. You've been born again, you've been dealt the measure of faith. But your faith has nothing to do if you don't have any expectation to attach to it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith gives your hope substance. Okay. If you stay in hope, and I say this all the time, if you stay in hope and hope alone, all you will have is icing. You know, icing on the cake? All you have is icing. You won't have any substance. But the moment you have hope and get this and you start to release your faith, you now give that icing substance. So when a person is falling apart, I begin to ask the question, where is your hope so that your faith can give you substance? It's like a jump house. 
Anybody ever seen those jumping houses, jumping castles? If you lean up against it and then they disconnect the air from it, it, it starts to lose its... I'm hopeful that I can jump in this thing, but if I don't, if I don't release my faith, it will never give the jumping castle substance, get this, so I can lean on it. Faith gives your hope substance. Every single day, we have an opportunity to have a fresh start with Jesus. Every single day, we have an opportunity to have a fresh start in, in living by faith. For the last two weeks, I've been intentional about not using my asthma inhaler, something that has plagued me since I was a little kid. And, and Kip, I, I just made a decision. I'm going to put my faith on it like never before. And at night is like when it comes worse, where it's like I can't breathe at night before going to bed. And so I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to go get my inhaler. But what I do is, is I start using the word of God and I start speaking to my lungs. I start speaking to every part of my lung, right? The air sacs and uh, the wall, the cilia hair and all that kind of stuff. I start speaking to it and then I go to sleep. Can I tell you this week I use my inhaler only once and I normally use it two, three times a day. Fresh start, fresh start. See, some of y'all would have been like, well, you used it once, but I, let me qualify it. Remember, I had to keep it in proper context because I would have gotten lost like, man, I used my inhaler this week, but I used to use it two to three times a day, once in the morning, afternoon, and night. I would take it before I come up and preach. Haven't had to do that. <sighs> what am I saying? Every day, you get a fresh start with Jesus. And here at this church and around the nations, we want to give nations fresh starts with Jesus. We want to raise up more disciples to help them to know God, to help them to find freedom, to help them discover purpose, and ultimately to make a difference. If my life can be a testimony for you, let it be. That God's not done yet. God's still working. Fresh starts with Jesus. If you've never been discipled before, like there's no one walking with you, and you realize, you know what, I need, I need some discipleship. I need somebody to, to walk a journey with me. Because sometimes at the church, we just, we, we, we just get you born again and we leave it at that. But we really got to begin to have this journey with you, doing life with you. If that's you, if you're like, man, Pastor, I, I need to get discipled. That fresh start right now happens right now. Maybe you need to become a disciple. If that's you, just raise your hand up. Come on, raise your hand up. Hey, Pastor, I need some discipleship. Come on, raise your hand up. We're not going to judge you. We're not going to talk about you. We want to help you. We want to help you. Come on, I think more hands should be going up that say, you know, Pastor, I need to be a disciple. I need somebody to, to walk a journey with me. Now, do me a favor. Take out your phone. and, and we're gonna, See, this is, a, this is so cool. You get to use your phone in the midst of a salvation message. Take out your phone and text to 081-210-4220. That's the church number. 081-210-4220. Text the word discipleship, and we'll take it from there. Text the word discipleship, and we'll take it from there. We're going to be start getting people discipled and walking this journey. We've got to build community, and the church says. Thank you so much for joining us today at Experience Court Global Online. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe below so you can be alerted anytime we're posting new content. Also, if you're in the Vindic area or maybe you're visiting, we would love to have you here and host you at the Echo Center. Below are the details on where to find us. And we would love your financial support so we can continue to bring you the same type of programming that you experienced today. Once again, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.